My name is Tony Galanti. Welcome to Prophecy in Christ, where I use the Word of God in front of me at all times. I do not vacillate from the Word of God. I stick to it. Uh, we really have to be doing that in today's day and age, okay? Uh, because there's a lot of stuff going on out there that's really not holding to the Word of God, unfortunately. But at any rate, I wanted to um, tell you, please hit the likes and, and, subscri and su uh, subscribe. Sure. I got, got the word out of my mouth. Subscribe, okay? All right. Today, I want to talk to you about a character in the Bible that a lot of people overlook, and a lot of people don't seem to understand uh, the impact of what this man did. And a lot of people don't seem to understand what the Word of God is really saying about this individual and what he did, okay, and how he did it. Um, we're talking about a person by the name of Ehud, Ehud. And this is in the book of uh, uh, Judges, okay. Uh, it's under chapter 3, okay, chapter 3, Ehud. And verses 15 to uh, 30, 31, <clears throat> verses 15 to 31, but I'm not going to get into it all. Into it all. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because I want to show you an aspect of how God can use you and me, no matter what kind of, uh, what kind of situation we, we have in our life. Okay? Uh, this is a, a very encouraging. It's one of the more violent situations in the Bible. I'm going to guarantee you that. But I want to show you there's something here for all of us to latch on to, to hang on tight to, and to be strong in the Lord with, okay? Um, I want to show you that, uh, not that I'm trying to encourage violence by any means, but uh, Ehud was a judge, okay? And, you know, we've heard of Samson, and he was a judge, and so on and so forth, and Deborah, they were, she was a judge too. But Ehud is not spoken about very much. And he was a judge who delivered uh, he delivered Israel from uh, Moab, or, or Moab, okay? And um, there was a king by the name of Eglon, okay? And it almost seemed to be that, you know, Eglon had his, you know, his, I guess his castle, whatever you want to call it, or his place of, of residence, per se. And it was extremely, extremely well guarded, okay? But the Word of God shows us something here. And this goes to anybody who has any kind of handicap, a learning disability, uh, any kind of, uh, you know, you may even have a child who's struggling through things and, and realize God can still use anyone, even you. You know, you may think, well, I don't have a really prestigious job or what have you or anything, anything like that. Okay? I want you to realize that God, and some of us, you know, may have certain health conditions, you know, um, that uh, affect our body. You know, sometimes we get too skinny, we're too big, we're too heavy, all kinds of things, okay? Some people can have children, some people can't have children, but God can still use you no matter what. It doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter how tall you are. Uh, it doesn't matter how, you know, it doesn't make a difference. God can still use you for his kingdom, all right? Um and I want to show you how God used Eglon, I mean, excuse me, God used Ehud, okay, to eliminate Eglon, the king, okay, of uh, Moab, okay. Um, if you go to the verse here, verse uh, 15, excuse me, of uh, chapter 3, okay, it says here, But when the sons of Israel cried to the Lord, okay, the Lord raised up a deliverer. For them, Ehud, the son of Gera, okay, the Benjamite, a left-handed man, and the sons of Israel sent tribute to him, to Eglon, the king of Moab. Okay, now if you go on here, it says here. The next verse, it says here, And Ehud made himself a sword, which had two edges, okay? A cubit in length, which is about 18 inches, roughly, 20 inches, right? And he bound it 
to his right thigh. Okay. Now remember, he's a left-handed man. He bounded to his right thigh. The left to the right. Okay. He bounded, okay, to his right thigh under his cloak. Okay, so he had it under his cloak. And he presented the tribute to Iglon, king of Moab. Now, Iglon was a very fat man, maybe five, six hundred pounds, I don't know, you know, but that's what I think is really fat because it says uh, later, I'll get into that later. But what I want to show you here is this, that, um, okay, Ehud was a Benjamin. Okay, that's the same way Paul, Paul came through that, the, you know, the tribe of Benjamin, okay? But it says here he was a left-handed man, okay? Let me assure you of one thing. All the swordsmen in Israel in those days were not left-handed. They were right-handed, okay? Right-handed men. There were no left-handed men who were swordsmen. The left-handers were the slingers. They would, you know, take use a sling like David did with Goliath. Boom! David probably used his left hand hitting, hitting Goliath with that with that rock. Okay. Now, so what does this really mean here? Okay. It says, you know, as as I just read earlier, it says that Eglon actually, you know, made a sword a cubit long, about that long. Okay. And put it under his right, on his right thigh, okay, under his cloak. And it's very, very, very possible. I don't think there's conjecture in this either. Some people say there is, but that's okay too. It's possible, very possible, that Eglon, or, or excuse me, Ehud, let me get it straight, I'm sorry, Ehud didn't, didn't have a right hand. May he most likely did not have a right hand, or his hand was deformed. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to tell you another thing. Let me jump to something else too, real quick. You know, the Apostle Paul even says, "I'm writing this with my own hand," per se. Right? It's very possible that the Apostle Paul's hand was damaged, broken, smashed, whatever, through all the escapades that he he went through as an apostle. All right, and the beatings and so on and so forth. So. Because he had all the others write things for him, you know, this he had secretaries write things for him. So when Paul says something like that, he's saying, I'm I'm writing this with my own hand. In other words, I'm signing this with my own hand. You gotta even look into that too sometimes, okay? There's a lot in the scripture that people don't want, they don't even realize and just brush right over it. Okay. But Ehud, but Ehud now goes in, <clears throat> he talks to Eglon, he gives him the tri tribute, and he says basically. You know, this is the tribute, and he takes the sword that he has on his right leg, right side, right hip, with his left hand, because, you see, every, the guards must have looked at him and said, he, he doesn't even have a, ref, a right hand, he's going to be harmless, okay? But what he did was he came in, grabbed his sword with his left hand, and he plunged it into Eglon to the point where it even says in the scripture that the fat went over the sword, okay? That's how big he was. And that's how Israel got freed. And uh, Ehud escaped and so on and so forth. And then they were delivered. Israel was delivered. But I want you to realize this. Again, whatever kind of handicap you have, whatever the kind of situation you have, you know, some people are really, really smart. Some people are not very smart. It doesn't matter. God still loves you and God still cares about you no matter who you are, okay? We got to do the right things, of course. We can't be manipulative and, and uh, demanding and uh, push things around. And, and People back up from that. I know I'm that way. I back up real quick. Like, no, nope. I shut down. And that's the way to be because the Lord doesn't want us going through that kind of stuff either, you know? <clears throat> you know? Um, so the idea here is I don't care what kind of handicap you have, what kind of concern you have, uh, God can still use you in his kingdom, okay? I don't care if it's an emotional problem or a mental problem. Yeah, it doesn't make a difference. A physical problem, even a spiritual problem sometimes. You know, I mean, spiritual problems, yeah. You know, sometimes people think, oh, you've got to be set this way to do any good for God. And I, and I, I look at, I've seen people say that, you know, and I'm like, 
oh yeah, that's true. I'm like, yeah, baloney is true. You know, I'm, I mean, I basically tell them it's ridiculous. You know, I mean, God can use anyone in his kingdom. All right. Just don't forget that. And um, this is an application. I mean, look at Mary and Joseph. They weren't the richest people in the world. I mean, and you know, they couldn't even get an inn. They couldn't even get a place in the inn. You know, I'm not saying they were poor people, but even if you're dirt poor, I don't care. This will still give you the strength to keep going no matter what. And don't ever, ever, ever again, or ever think that you're not being used of God if you, if you believe you're being used of God. You stick to it no matter what. You know, let me tell you something. When you become a Christian, God is giving you a spiritual gift, okay? And he wants you to use that gift. And you know what? That comes with the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit dwells us. And he, use, he gives us, many, many of us, he gives more than one gift. But I don't care if he gives you one gift, okay? And I'm not, I'm not, I'm talking about the ministry gifts, you know, like prophecy and teaching and serving and mercy and giving and, uh, and encouragement, what have you. And ruling is another one, too. People can't, when people rule, they can't stand it in the church. Oh, you should make, well, prophecy comes along, you tell them the real truth of the word of God. A lot of people don't want to hear that because you know what? It threatens them because you know what? It shows up that they're not studying. That's not right. Okay. But you still got to do the thing. You still got to do the. You still got to utilize your spiritual gift, and you got to do it in the spirit of Christ. And a lot of people, you can even do it in the spirit of Christ. People are going to malign you for it. So keep going because you know what? We don't serve others. We serve the Lord Jesus Christ only. Okay. And that's what I wanted to tell you today. Be encouraged. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, not our might. Okay. Thank you. Lord bless you. Be encouraged. Keep going forward for the Lord. And above all, stick with the word of God only. Okay? You need to stick with the word of God. That's very, very important. Lord bless you. Subscribe. And, uh, you know, hit the likes button too. Okay? All right. Take care. Bye-bye now.